Williamson is ten times the world champion. Fax and Stupilis, they've done it again. Unbelievable. Marvin Van Luken has certainly deserves the red plate. And what an incredible sport this is. Fast, high and spectacular. Unbelievable. Oi, preloško, preloško, Hello again, friends and fans of Sidecar Cross. Welcome to the Ukraine. We're in Buka, not too far from the capital, Kiev. And the people here are some of the warmest you will find anywhere. This is a fiercely proud country with a colourful history and a distinct culture all of its own. There's an air of quiet calm with people going about their daily business in tranquil and magical surroundings. Who would have thought that right next door to this haven of peace, round five of the World Sidecar Cross Championship was about to explode into action. On a brand new purpose-built facility, we were full of expectation and what a welcome these lovely people gave us. Just take a look at this. of World Sidecar Cross Championship, we were in Bucha, Ukraine. This promised to be a very interesting weekend because this was a completely new track for all the teams and no one had raced here before. Sunday race day was hot not only off the track but also on the track. There was so much action and teams put up a great fight in this perfect weather. So please, stay tuned, watch us now. All the action will be right here, right now. The opening round kicked off in Lommel, Belgium, in typical going. The deep sand, as normal, proved to be a real challenge and in these conditions even the best are caught out sometimes. One of those top guns to fall victim was Julian Veldman. We had a big crash on the, on the place uh, where we passed Daniel Willemsen in the, in the first heat. We, we touched him with the sidecar wheel on his rear wheel and that was, uh, yeah, a crash with full speed, so uh, it was a big crash. Another crew in trouble were Bax and Stupilis. We made a crash, we, we made a pretty bad uh, flip. Uh, we lose uh, so much positions. I don't remember what exactly happened, but I, I fell out once again. In the end of the day, uh, we win the second moto and that was, uh, that was a great feeling again. Then it was off to Talavera de la Reina in Spain for round two. Victory went to Valentin Giro and his new German passenger, Andres Haller. I won my first heat and that was awesome. And yeah, it's really nice to do that and uh, it gives a feeling of, yeah, I want more of this. But there was no more in race two with smoke and steam everywhere on the final lap. It was game over. We was on the way to, to, to the podium, but on the last lap uh, we had an uh, engine uh, problem. Well, he was not on his own. Arne Dierkins and Robbie Bax were also in the wars. After the big uh, table jumps, uh, we want to try to break, but there was nothing. So yeah, then you're always too late. And then we got a big crash, actually. That was, was, was real. We lose uh, 10 points, but uh, finally on the end of the day, I think we uh, need to be happy. We are uh, again on the podium on, uh, on the sand track. So that was uh, really cool and it was for us a long time ago that we had a double victory. Yeah, you know, we don't want to give that away anymore. But round four in Kremlin in the Czech Republic saw Arne Dierkins emerge victorious. It was great, it's good motivation for the team for the, the rest of the season and uh, I hope to do more uh, like this. Bax and Stupilis were riding well enough but fell foul of the regulations. We had a slight problem with the exhaust in the second motor. We are six points in, uh, behind of uh, 
van Luggenen, so nothing uh, really big uh, problem. So riding high in Kremlin, it was victory once again for Marvin van Luckener and Ben van den Bogart. And they came away with a six-point lead over Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupilis. Kern Hermans catching up now in third place. Daniel Willemsen, Luke Rostang still in fourth. Davy Sanders rode well. Stuart Brown always there or thereabouts. Valentin Giro, a steady ride. Can he repeat it here? Veldman did not ride and is not here either. Koiben van Verben, he was going well in practice. What can he do here in the Ukraine this weekend? Round five of a 14 round campaign visiting 10 countries finds us here close to the capital Kiev. We're in a country which borders seven other countries. The biggest of all, of course, is Russia. The organizers have gone to extraordinary lengths to provide a top class track and we can't wait. Hi, welcome to the track walk here in Ukraine. My name is Steve Randall. This is a complete, completely new track for 2019 FIM sidecar cross season. As you can see, this, the soil is fairly sandy. They have watered it fairly well over the weekend and this will possibly cut up a little. As you can see also, we have a short start straight here this weekend and we go then into a tight right-hander, 190 degrees, then into a short left-hander. Hopefully we shall have some exciting racing and that you will enjoy. This may not be deep sand, but one guy going well in free practice, Gert van Verben, seemed to like the going, as did Peter Bunk, his passenger. Yeah, it's a new uh, uh, track, never been here before. Uh, it's Everything is new, the accommodation, everything. Track uh, is good, lots of jumps, uh, technical track. But uh, we had uh, some good speed, third time, so I think it's, uh, yeah, it's good. Latvian hardman Kurt Varick was another really fast crew like we've said before. This is a team sport and he wasn't going anywhere without his man Loris Diders. Yeah, I say like this track, it's uh, it's hard 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 track now, it's and uh, many jumps and many corners, right and left. The speed it's uh, not not enough but um, but it's okay, but we need to we know where we lose, we need one jump jumping. I hope we jump. Coming off the back of a disappointing Kremlin, young Jake Brown had everything to prove. He and Joe Millard are going well together, but would their luck change here? A terrible weekend, really. It just went from bad to worse. Uh, we did everything we could, and uh, we didn't really run the new motor in. That was the problem. And uh, yeah, going to that wet track, it, it knackered up. But this weekend, yeah, we feel good. Uh, the track doesn't really suit the left hand chair again, but. Uh, it's, we'll, we'll see how we get on. <laughs> the speed's good. I think I think the, the group that we're in, Group A, I think is a little bit more difficult. There's some really talented riders in there. And yeah, I think we're just going to take what we can. Tomorrow's the main day. Like I say, we don't have to prove anything today. But yeah, we'll see what we can do today. Only 24 crews made the journey to the Ukraine, so the groups, 12 in each group, a very sparse grid, so no need for a second row. Group A qualifying got underway, and it was an absolutely flying start for Davy Sanders and Larry Kunas, but underneath at the first turn went Kern Hermans and Nicola Musset, and they were to lead the charge on the opening lap, and they were having a fantastic time. The Browns, father and son, Stuart and Jake, were side by side and vying for third and fourth. In second place it was Sanders. Justin Koiben, number 17, he and Dion Reitman were going well. They were all in there. Even Compilati, the Italian, was well placed, although I would have expected him to have been further up the order. At the front, though, on this amazing purpose-built facility, with a built-in watering system, would you believe, which was actually brought into play quite extensively overnight, because it did under blue skies and a 24 degree ambient temperature it did cut up quite dusty the browns father and son number 888 stewart and number 28 jake who at this moment in time was ahead in third place were going really really well 
Sanders looking good. Jake Brown went through. Stuart Brown chasing him. And Stuart might just be thinking at this point, I've taught the kid too much. Marvin Van Luuk and Ben Van den Bogart carrying the red plate after their double success in Kremlin were in fifth place, but very shortly they made it fourth. This was a spectacular track with massive, massive jumps. Some liked it, some didn't. Some said it suited the left-hand chairs, some said it didn't suit the left-hand chairs, and it seemed to me certainly that the right-handed sidecars, as ridden by Van Luken and, I have to say, the bulk of the entry, fared better. It was quite hard packed underneath the surface at the front. Kern Hermans and Nicolas Mousset were going great guns, showing the promise that they developed when they teamed up last year and uh, achieved such a wonderful season, finishing second in the world. Can they go one better this year? They're already sitting strongly in the standings, as you saw. Davy Sanders and the Finnish passenger Larry Kunas have ridden together really well in 2019. They were doing their utmost to keep Van Lukena at bay. He and Ben van den Bogart, again, in their second season together, looking very, very strong. The four times world champion passenger van den Bogart, vastly experienced, and uh, would be having a word possibly in the ear of his younger driver, van Lukena, who is so accomplished on the inside of Davy Sanders, was he able to keep that move round the outside and driving hard? And indeed, indeed he did. On that 180 degree right-handed bend, it lined him up beautifully for the next right-hander. And round he went. Over the jump then. Van Lukener up to second place. Ahead of him, Kern Hermans and Nicola Mousset. But a good way up the road. Sanders and Kunas in third. Just look how close we were to the buildings here. We have purpose-built administration buildings here, as well as a built-in watering system. It really is a stunning facility in use for the first time for this 2019 Ukrainian Sidecar Cross Grand Prix. Jake Brown and Joe Millard, number 28, going so much better than they did in a disastrous Kremlin, side-by-side, with Justin Coyben and Dion Reitman, another young crew. I use the word young quite a lot because I have to say this has become a young man's sport and so many of the crews from all the nations represented are young. Taking the checkered flag in Group A qualifying, Kern Hermans and Nicola Mousset, fantastic result for them and that would give them pick of the bunch for the gate in tomorrow's Grand Prix races. Waiting for Van Lukener and Van den Bogart, but no disputing the race winner from the second turn. They took the lead in Group A qualifying and brought it home nearly 20 seconds ahead of Van Lukener and Van den Bogart. starters, 12 finishers, all the Brown family in the top 10. No mistaking the winner though. Brilliant victory for Kern Hermans. Yeah, finally we did have a good start. Uh, it's easier for riding. Uh, yeah, then we have found some uh, good lines and I see yeah, the gap was bigger and bigger and then you feel good on the bike and yeah, we are really happy with this uh, first place. Group B then, sparse grid again, 12 more to go this time. And who would get the whole shot? We know what the rapid starter Arna Dierkins, the number 10, is like. Could he pull it off here again? A really, really quick start from somebody in the middle there. Dierkins is right up there though, as indeed is Daniel Willemson, the 1-1-1 crew. Dierkins it was though who got the advantage and dropped into the lead ahead of Daniel Willemson. So it was a 1-2 for those boys over the top. Who was in third? Well, where's Etienne Bax? Looking for Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupelis in third. They are the number 82 crew. No longer carrying the red plate. That is the 
privilege now of Marvin van Lukener and Ben van den Bogart. Willemsen it was in second, Bax in third, Christoph Santemans and Kostas Beletskas in fourth place. Out front though, Arne Dierkins and Robbie Bax, younger brother of the man in third place. Janu Willemsen, Luke Rostang holding second strongly here. A glance over the shoulder there from Willemsen to Luke, his French passenger. They need to line these guys up if they're going to find a way past Arna Dierkins. But Arna Dierkins and Robbie Bax really, really starting so strongly at every single race. The top three pulling away. And I have to say, Etienne Bax at this point looking as though he was making hard work of it. At the front, though, it was neck and neck. Willemsen doing everything he could, doing his utmost to try and find his way past Arna Dierkins, but he was not so fast over the whoop de doops before the tabletop. Etienne Bax closed really, really quickly on him, and then it was a fight for second place, which ultimately Bax would dispute and get the better of Daniel Willemsen. At this moment in time, though, he was third. Willemsen doing everything he could to defend the line. Bax was out in the loose stuff. That was what looked like a mistake, but in actual fact, he used it to his advantage because he cut back in and got the drive towards the right-hander. It did cost him time, though. He was in the deep stuff. Daniel Willemsen looking over his shoulder again to see where his arch-rival was, and his arch-rival was right there in his wheel tracks, looking at the inside line to find a way through. Could he eventually get past Willemsen? Well, closing behind them, and as Bax went through, the fourth place crew very much on a charge. Gert van Verven and Peter Bunk were there, the number 14 crew right behind Daniel Willemsen, and looking as though they were going for third. They were doing their utmost. In second place now, Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupelis going strongly, and still in fifth, the number 16 crew, Christoph Sandemans and Kostas Beletskas, as Bax went through in second, you can see Van Verven riding so strongly here, the number 14 pairing. All over the back of Daniel Willemsen, they were pushing really, really hard and looking every which way to find a way through. Willemsen riding almost defensively, so uncharacteristically, and I've not seen this sort of display from Willemsen recently. Again, a look across. Out in front, though, Arna Jerkins had gone. Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupelis were there. Then the moment came when Van Verven and Peter Bunk stole third place from Daniel Willemsen and Luke Rostang, demoting the 10 times world champion to fourth. He had a look on the inside to see if there was any way back, but the place belonged to the number 14 crew, Van Verven and Bunk, and they made it stick and made it their own. Willemsen was not pleased with that. You could see by his body language that he wanted that place back oh so desperately. Number 10 though, Arne Dierkins and Robbie Bax were victorious here by a considerable margin. From the number 82 crew, Etienne Bax and Kaspers Stupelis. 12 crews started and uh, as Arna Jerkins did his slow down lap, we were still waiting for Gert van Verven and Peter Bunk to come home in third place. They were deep among the tail enders, but there, victorious, Jerkins and Bax, number 10. Tail enders coming over, and then it was Gert van Verven's turn to take the checkered flag, third place ahead of Daniel Willemsen and Luke Rostang. The sun-kissed crowd here being treated to an absolutely brilliant display of qualifying. But the top two, five seconds apart, undisputably. Right down the order, it was a long time coming for Van Verven and Bunk. How they line up tomorrow then, Kern Hermans pole position from Dierkins, Van Luken at Etienne Bax. Those are the quick guys. Davy Sanders was flying here, as indeed was Van Verven. Varick, Willemsen will be disappointed, eighth fastest. Koiben Kinge completing the top 10. What a great ride for George Kinge and Lewis Gray. Brilliant. Top 10 for them. They will be thrilled. Varick always goes well and he's strong in this sort of going. Good to see them up there.
The Koosh Boys going well. Christoph Santamans, we saw Pavel Frock, the Czech, Compilati, Jake Brown, way, way ahead of Stuart Brown, who will line up 19th, so that will be a second row start for Stuart Brown. And the young German there in 18th, Adrian Petter, with Miroslav Zatlukel. And by the way, if you're wondering where Valentin Giro is, he crashed out heavily in pre-qualifying this morning, has got wrist injuries, so probably will not race. Local guys bringing up the back of the field there. Yeah, it felt uh, awesome. We took uh, immediately a good start. It was tight in the first corner, but we, we took it. And then uh, we could uh, have a good pace. Uh, Robbie was guiding me good to, uh, with some good lines. And um, we managed to keep our first uh, qualifying win of my career. So uh, I'm really happy. And there the camp of the luckless Valentin Giro taken to hospital. No brakes confirmed, but too painful to race today. We went for a fast lap in the pre-qualification and uh, in the jump down we yeah, don't jump straight and uh, we're landing on the footrest and it's uh, bring uh, us in the air so we had a, b a bad crash and the first moment when I was on the floor I felt my um, left hand and uh, I take out the glove and uh, one finger was uh, dislocated so I just go out of the track and the doctor put me this finger back yeah and uh, some minutes later yeah I it was painful like everywhere also my uh, right wrist and but I went to the hospital and they say nothing is broken so yeah I'm happy with that and now it's I, I start to feel better and better well great qualifying here in the UK fantastic weather great track I guess everyone's happy Это мой город, я здесь родился и давно уже хотел и мечтал о том, чтобы чемпионат мира проходил на этом треке. Поэтому мы усовершенствовали его до этого уровня и, слава богу, он сегодня здесь. Я занимался мотокроссом больше 20 лет и участвовал в чемпионатах Европы. Я бронзовый и серебряный призер чемпионата Европы. Также был участником чемпионатов мира, поэтому я знаю и вижу, как, на каком уровне должен проходить чемпионат мира. Поэтому я старался воплотить это сегодня здесь. Ну, я действительно очень рад, очень рад, что э, у нас чемпионат прошел на высоком уровне. Э, я рад еще то, что зрителя, зрителей было очень много. Это вдвойне приятно и думаю, что мы будем усовершенствоваться еще в следующем году. У меня мечта провести выше, 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 все больше и больше соревнований, но, конечно, мечта это провести командный чемпионат мира. Welcome back to race day in Buka on round five of the World Cycle Cross Championship. Good weather brought out the fans in their thousands, all keen to meet the men who matter. After the riders' presentation, it was time to prepare mechanically and psychologically. Marvin van Lukener was no exception. Uh, like every track, the, the start is very important. Uh, yesterday we we, uh, we did a mistake in the, in the start, so uh, we have the, the third uh, gate pick, but uh, yeah, we will see. We hopefully uh, we have a better start than yesterday, and yeah, then we will see what the race brings. Number two in the world and going well this weekend too, Kern Hermans and his French sidekick, Nicolas Mousset. 
Of course, it's completely different uh, than yesterday. They put all water uh, in the night. Uh, I hope uh, for the first uh, race uh, we can find a good line, but uh, yeah, we will see. I hope also the quad uh, make uh, the the big run uh, outside, and uh, yeah, we will see. But I think it's getting better with the water. Earning a reputation for his lightning starts, Anna Dierkins is having a great season with Robbie Bax. Morning, it was really wet, and uh, we didn't make so much laps actually to uh, uh, to save some time for the mechanics. Uh, we get uh, we get five place uh, in the in the morning, and today we got second to the gate. And uh, I think it will be a great day because uh, we're really into this track. And um, yeah, looking forward to it. And I think I hope there is a podium in, in the weekend. And when the talking's over, it's time to concentrate. And in this heat, and boy, was it hot there! These guys then, their last minute thoughts, a bit of light-hearted banter, but really the focus was coming down to what lay ahead. Two races of 30 minutes plus two laps in searing heat, temperatures of 24, 25 degrees, would not be funny. These guys knew it. There would only be 22 starters on the line, so lots of points to play for, and everyone would be going for glory, but this, Round five was a very serious business indeed. And as the clock counted down, the tension rose even more. Thirty minutes plus two laps lay ahead of these guys. Twenty-two starters on the line, just a handful on the back row nearest the camera. Jake Brown and Joe Millard, would they get a flyer with their left-hand sidecar? Well, it was the right-hand line which proved to be the quickest, and it was Arno Dierkins who took an absolutely brilliant charge into the first turn. The whole shot king, he and Robbie Bax were at it again, leading. Willemsen was up there as well. Big tangle, though, already guys in trouble at the back of the field. Arno Dierkins, it was leading from Daniel Willemsen. Marvin Van Lukener was in the hunt as well. No sign at this stage. Luke Van Lukener was third. He and Van den Bogart, the number one crew, sitting in third place. That would be a good position for them to capitalize on and maybe, hopefully, progress through. Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupelis in the vivid red shirts were sitting in fourth. So they were very much on the case of the reigning champions. Dierkins and Bax, very fast here. They were so brave over the jumps. There were ruts on the corners, but nothing compared to what we saw just one week ago in Kremlin in vastly different weather conditions. This circuit here, so well prepared. Kurt Varick got a flyer as well. He was pushing, pushing very, very hard. But Arne Dierkins out in front, Bax, Kern Hermans further down the order, Varick ahead of Kermans, the number seven crew. He and Larry Kunas always in the hunt this season. And when it comes to hard packed tracks like this, Kurt Varick is the hard man, the number seven. Arne Diokinso looking good and looking fast, but already a problem that looked like Willemsen going wide there on the outside. Varick just ahead of Kern Hermans. And Daniel Willemsen it was indeed who was in the loose stuff there and struggling as a result. This was another one of those tracks where you just could not shake anybody off. It was very difficult to break away and then suddenly this happened. In pursuit of Arno Durkins, Marvin van Luken and Ben van der Bogart got crossed up on the double jump and it was a massive off for them. Making the most of it, Etienne Bax. Well, that put Van Lucana well down the order. Varick, though, chasing with Hermans right in his wheel tracks. Bax ahead of them, so you are now looking at the second, third, and fourth crews because out in front it was still Arne Dierkins and Robbie Bax absolutely flying here. Hermans then went past the Latvian Varick. Varick and Loris Diders riding so well together. The Latvian Estonian pairing. But Hermans and Nicolou Mousset growing in confidence this year, number two last year, this year they'd love to go one better. Well, of course, they would. 
and they were trying really, really hard here in these hot, bumpy conditions with Marvin van Lukenen and Ben van den Bogart none the worse for their big crash, having righted it, got it back on three wheels, and they were very soon back in business and flying high. No stranger to crashing, Van Lukener. It doesn't dent his confidence. It doesn't dent his personal zest. He just pushes as hard as ever. All of these sidecar drivers in their formative careers, passengers too, will have had their share of hard tumbles. Talking of hard tumbles, Valentin Giro, as we've said, decided not to start. Nursing an injured arm from that big crash in free practice, Valentin Giro hopefully will be back for his home Grand Prix next time we are in France. Arna Dierkinzen was now coming under pressure from Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupilis, who were trying time and time again to get past alongside they did several times. Dierkins has shown just how high he can jump. It was a massive, massive piece of air he took over that tabletop that time. Landed beautifully as well. Such is the confidence of this young Belgian, Dierkins. Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupilis playing the waiting game. Back seems to grow in speed as the race progresses. He would know that if he kept trying that inside line enough times, eventually he would make it stick. A tail ender momentarily thwarted him that time, but still it was Dierkins. Then it was Bax alongside. Is he going to make a move? He tried. Arnold Dierkins, though, riding with all the composure of the experience that he's got since he teamed up with Robbie Bax this year. They really have gone well together. And one or two exciting moments, as we've seen in the four Grand Prix so far. But certainly they can start, and once they get out in front, they put on a really, really good show. This time round, though, Bax was as close as he'd ever been. He looked at the inside, he lined up Arno Dierkins. It looked to me as though it was now or never. Through he went on the inside, got the outside line and chopped across into the right-hander and we had a new race leader. Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupilis were now ahead. Dierkins was then coming under pressure from Kern Hermans and Nicolas Mousset. It's almost as though he lost his composure. When Bax went past, Dierkins shook his head, lost the plot just a little bit and suddenly Kern Hermans and Nicolas Mousset were on him and pushing hard. Was Dierkins going to hold on to second or was Hermans going one more notch up the ladder to grab that second spot? Well, there is your answer. Over the jump, Hermans then grabbed second place and then set off in pursuit of Etienne Bax. Marvin van Lukener was making his way up through the field. He was behind Gert van Verven and Peter Bunk. Ahead of them, it was Stuart Brown and Josh Chamberlain. They were Linus Stern and Chamberlain. Oh, dab out of the sidecar. Almost lost it there. That allowed van Verven, the number 14 crew, to go past. And van Lukener was right on them. So the British crew, Brown, but they grabbed that place back. Undeterred Stuart Brown on the 888 bike. Got the hammer down, slipped through on the inside and made amends for that momentary lapse that almost cost him a place. But meanwhile, what that did do was allow Marvin van Lukener, the number one red-plated rider, to move very close on the inside of Van Verven. And he was to claim that place. Stuart Brown again got stuck. Van, van Verven rammed him and Van Lukener was by taking two places in one fell swoop. Brown then having his share of problems with the left-handed chair on this very fast and now rutting out circuit. Heavily watered overnight, but still the going was good here under cloudless blue skies. Kurt Varick was next. Arna Jerkins got it all wrong with the sidecar wheel in the air and Kurt Varick and Laura Stiders were the next crew to capitalize and relegate Arna Jerkins and Robbie Bax down one more place. This was a brilliant ride by Varick, and it was all going wrong for Dierkins on these unpredictable conditions. Out in front, though, Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupilis charged the victory, taking the flag from Kern Hermans and Nicolas Mousset, who closed to within four seconds of them as they lapped Justin Coyben and Dion Reitman. But Bax it was, 
brilliant, brilliant ride for them. They'll be absolutely thrilled with that. And why not? A long way back, waiting for Kurt Varick to finish third. But there it is, Bats and Stupilis, victorious. Brilliant ride for them. Confirmation of that win. Kern Herman second, Varick, Arna Dierkins hung on to fourth. Van Lukenen was closing though, fought back up to fifth. Ahead of Stuart Brown, who held six. Yeah, it's great, you know, we had, uh, well, we struggled with the bike setup yesterday, and uh, yeah, we, I must say, we worked almost uh, till midnight last evening to make everything ready for the day, and uh, it worked out so far, so I'm, I'm really happy with this win, and uh, it gives confidence, and uh, yeah, we had last week uh, a lot of struggle, as we all know, and um, this is good, this is good for the confidence, and um, hopefully we can make a solid motor in Moto2. That was a different sort of emotion from Marvin Van Luken and Ben van der Bergart, who were lucky to escape from this one. We don't try to overtake Arne, but uh, yeah, we jumped too short on the on the wave section and yeah, we crashed. We're still okay, uh, nothing is broken, so uh, we can drive. Yeah, we fight uh, hard back, but uh, the fifth place was uh, most possible, so uh, we will see the second race. Lots to reflect on then for Marvin van Luken, as indeed all the crews after race one then, race two was just around the corner. A lot of preparation, a lot of psychological preparation, a lot of thinking, a lot of looking, a bit more gardening. And as the clock counted down, all thoughts were on 30 minutes plus two laps in this heat for race two, which was ahead of them and coming up very shortly. Arna Dierkins from the leader to fourth. Could he go better this time? Kern Herman's going well. Bax, can he make it a double here? Well, we were about to find out. As race two got close to the off, we could not wait. Race two then, ready to go, and uh, 21 outfits this time because Daniel Willemsen and Luke Rostang had obviously had some sort of disagreement or a problem because they had loaded up their truck and they were not taking part. They were on their way home. It was a whole shot for Etienne Bax and Kasper Stublis who absolutely flew round the first turn with Davy Sanders and Larry Kunis, the number nine crew in hot pursuit. Marvin Van Lukena was in there as well. Kern Hermans was in third place, but Bax meant business this time out. Victory in race one, he wanted double victory here. He wanted that red plate back and he was going for it. Marvin Van Lukena sitting in fourth. There were problems further down the order with some of the slower crews. Only 21 starters this time. I remind you, and Davy Sanders going very, very well, but Kern Hermans and Nicolas Musset were on his case. The number two crew in third. The number one crew, Van Lukener, Vanden Bogart in fourth. The number 82 crew, Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupilis, already away with it. Stuart Brown, there Stuart Brown with his left-hand sidecar. Then Kern Hermans and Nicolas Musset had a massive problem the, uh, the little cutout, the automatic cutout which the rider has, which kills the engine should they turn turtle, that's a safety device to stop the bike charging into the crowd on full throttle. That needs replacing. It took them a long, long time to get fired up. This is not what they needed after such a strong ride in race one. Justin Coyman and Dion Reitman had their share of problems as well. So the rate of attrition in race two was already quite high. A diminished grid started and an even more diminished grid was competing on lap two. Round the bottom of the circuit behind the start gate, Arna Dierkins and Robbie Bax were in trouble as well. They got it crossed up on the ruts and uh, with massive consequences. They were lucky to get up and walk away from that one. Kurt Varick riding over Robbie Bax. Big crash indeed. And uh, it was all to play for as Marvin Van Lukener closed on Davy Sanders and took the most magnificent jump high in the air to claim the place. Just take a look at this. Van Lukener then right with Davy Sanders and passed him and now in pursuit of the race leader. Sanders and Kunas holding third, 
Out in front, backs of Stupilis, Van Lukener, the red-plated Van Lukener, in second and chasing hard. It was such a fast track here, but the ruts on the corners caught one or two out. Kern Hermans fighting back at this point was on the back of Christoph Santamans and Kostas Beletskas. The number 16 pairing in the red shirts. Hermans, having had that massive upside down, got it all going again, collected himself and was to recover, fighting through the order eventually to fourth place, which was a remarkable feat considering where he'd come from. Brown and Chamberlain were in there fighting as well, but Hermans and Musset, the number two, Closing on the back of Gert Van Verven and ahead of Van Verven was Stuart Brown and Josh Chamberlain. Kern Hermans with the number 14 crew ahead of him. And ahead of the number 14 crew. Number seven, Varick. Sandermans having his battle with the number 23 crew, George Kinge and Lewis Gray, who really, really come of age and are going so well in the 2019 championship. George King's a regular strong rider in the British championship and of course has done very well in Grand Prix but this year he is excelling himself, the number 23 and it was as simple as that. Using the left hand chair to good effect he was past Santamans pushing him further down the order. Kinge was later to go on and get a top 10 finish. That was a remarkable performance for him in the face of fierce fierce competition. More to come from those boys, I can tell you. Those young Brits going well together. Stuart Brown and Josh Chamberlain, the number 888 crew, were closing on Davy Sanders and Larry Kunas. Right behind them was Kern Herman, so Stuart Brown, with all his vast experience, knew that he had to try and get Sa Sanders between him and Kern Hermans because the Flying Hermans was closing down the red and yellow liveried British crew. They were the filling in that sandwich and their left hand chair did not work as well as Hermans right hand chair as he threw it inside and claimed the place. Could Brown get the place back over the jump? Well, he was certainly going to give it his best shot. Hermans then had Sanders in his sights, the number nine pairing and set after them with gusto. And it wasn't long before they too were relegated and came under the cosh of Kern Hermans. He was absolutely on a mission. Had he not been upside down early in the race, where might he have been, I wonder? Sanders was very quick on the run into the turns and we've seen that before. But Stuart Brown and Josh Chamberlain had not given up the fight and they very quickly took advantage of Sanders over the jump and claimed that place. So they only basically stayed, it was status quo. Hermans went by them, they went by Sanders, the big loser, the number nine crew, Sanders and Kunas, who went back two places. And you don't have to be a mathematician to work that one out. At the front though, Bax and Stupilis, number 82, were on target here for double victory. Van Lukener was closing them down. But you just got the impression that Bax and Stupilis had it all under control. Victory was in sight on the final lap. These boys were doing the double here this weekend and they would move back into the championship lead with victory here in Buka. And what a fantastic Grand Prix we have had here in the Ukraine. First time at this brand new circuit. Checkered flag awaits then. A wave in the air for Kasper Stupilis. A high five for the pair of them and it's double victory. A great result for Etienne Bax and Kasper Stupilis. Marvin van Luke and Ben van den Bogard followed them home. Overall victory here for Bax and Stupilis. Varek and Hermans, that's the top three overall. Van Lukener, he'll lose the red plate as a result of this round, but he'll be back to fighting. With a second place, a fourth place, a massive crash, it was third overall for Kern Hermans and Nicola Mousset. Uh, the start of the second race was uh, not so bad, but uh, then in the second round, I think we uh, crashed it because uh, the corner was really slippery and then 
Yeah, then we crash and we have to come back from the, I think, almost last place. Yeah, I'm not uh, really happy, of course, but uh, yeah, we will see the next time uh, in Plomil. Second overall, tying with them on 40 points, the Latvian rider and his passenger, Loris Didus, Kurt Parry. Very good feeling, of course. It's uh, not easy here. Before for GP, it's uh, very hard. Not not no beat, speed. And now I think it's I find something good, and I hope coming more better and better. But double victory and the red plate will come back next time we see these guys. Etienne Vax and Kaspar Stupilis supreme here in Buka. Yeah, uh, it's, it's amazing, you know, to, to end up the, the weekend like this because we started really bad. We had a, a bad feeling on the track, the setup of the bike uh, was not correct to our, our thing. So we worked yesterday till, till quite late, till 12 o'clock, I think, to change the complete setup. And uh, from that on, we started working since this morning. And uh, yeah, I think we find a good setting for today. And, uh, and, and luckily, we could win two races. I was very surprised in race two that we took a whole shot. Uh, it's a long time ago. But it feels good and it gives confidence for the future. Overall then, it's a very narrow margin, but it's backs back on top. Ahead of Van Lukener, Hermans, Sanders in there fighting, Stuart Brown a strong fifth. Ahead of Arne Dierkins, who didn't have the best of fortune despite his lightning starts. Daniel Willemsen, what is going to happen with those guys? All will be revealed. George Kinch and Lewis Gray, hats off to them. What a Ukrainian Grand Prix we've had here in Buka. From me, Barry Nutley, hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time we're here at WSC. Take care. We never stop, so go on when you finish. And even when we bleed, so believe that we can win this. We got what's underneath, you're all about that image. We never even stop at the top, no limits. Champions. Williamson is 10 times the world champion. Fax and Stupilis, they've done it again. Unbelievable. Marvin Van Lukener certainly deserves the red plate. And what an incredible sport this is. Fast, high and spectacular. Unbelievable.